All right, we're going to do a very nice moon day, very slow moon day flow today. So let's come on over to your mat. We'll get started in a seat. So Lola, the yoga dog, is in the space with us today. She may or may not allow us to practice. We'll see what happens. And let's just take a moment to come to a nice, easy seat. Bringing the ears in line with the shoulders and the shoulders in line with the hips. Maybe closing the eyes. And take a nice inhale to pick up through the crown of the head. And exhale, round your energy downward. And just starting to make your way into a rhythmic ujjayi breathing pattern where we inhale through the nostrils and pick up through the crown of the head, just feel the vertical breath inward. And exhale, vertical breath downward. And just doing that a couple of times. Inhale, rising the energy upward. And exhale, rounding everything down. Try to relax the shoulders, relax the jaw, relax the tongue. And as we land here, just take another few cycles of breath. Noticing breathing dominance over one nostril versus the other. And wherever your hands are, we're going to take them, palms face down onto the knees. If your eyes are closed, you can lift your eyelids. We're going to do some seated cat and cow. So let's inhale, just nice and slowly, peeling the heart open and looking up. And exhale, rounding into the upper back, looking downward. And again, inhale, opening it up, curling heart open. And exhale, rounding in, pulling the shoulder blades away from each other. And again, the inhale, curling on open. Exhale, rounding in. Inhale, really peel the heart open, lifting through the chest. Exhale, opening into your upper back. And one more time, inhale, opening it up. Exhale, curling in. And we'll inhale, come back to center. And we're going to do something called stir the pot. You know, just think about this concept. And we're simply going to start to move the spine in a circle, just trying to keep the hips relatively grounded and stable. And as we move in a circle, it doesn't matter which direction you're going to go because we'll switch in just a few moments, but just start to connect to your core. Maybe noticing your hips in their sockets. Maybe noticing your spine at the base and the pelvis as you move into a circle. Maybe notice your rib cage moving. Maybe different muscles in the ribs, the intercostals, or tiny little muscles in between the ribs. Maybe you can feel them stretching. I'm just trying to connect to a little bit more movement, getting bigger and bigger in the circular fashion. And then we're going to switch directions. So take a moment to let that settle in. Maybe it feels very strange to switch directions. Maybe it feels interesting enough to explore the movement. And then sinking it with breathing, maybe inhaling to pull the chest forward and exhale at the back of your circle. And just, you know, slow it down a little bit. This is so not a shanta, right? <laughs> but it's nice to be kind of amoebic instead of so rigid. We'll just take a few more circles. And 
And we'll bring it to a close, just coming on back to center. And let's walk the right hand over to the right side. We'll inhale, pick up the left arm to the sky. And exhale, a little nice lateral hinge. And just find a few cycles of breath here. You know, thinking about the triangle posture, the extended side angle of the Ashtanga practice. How can we feel a nice lateral stretch all the way down that side of the body? Simultaneously lifting everything up. And in the triangle posture, the extended side angles, we would ground the feet. But how can we ground down into the sit bones to lift a little bit more? Good. So we're going to come on up, take an inhale as we do, lift both arms to the sky. We're going to interlace fingers. Send the palms up. Just take a few cycles of breath here to rise upward with the rib cage lift out of the hips. Good. Last inhale and exhale. Release the hand. Let's switch sides, switch directions, just allowing that hinge to happen on over to the left side. And again, much like extended side angle, triangle postures, all those standing postures in Ashtanga, working on rooting downward so that we can lift away and just feel that peeling sensation of the muscles kind of pulling apart. Maybe it's a gentler sensation in the standing postures in Ashtanga. Maybe it's, you know, equivalent, but just getting into the side waist, up the rib cage. Breathing into that exposed lung. And we'll slowly inhale to come back up, we'll lift the arms to the sky. And exhale, let's take the hands behind your bum, push the fingertips into the ground, and just ask the heart to lift. Do bring the shoulder blades toward each other. Maybe shift the gaze upward. Tuck the bum under, though, just to provide stabilization for your low back. And just access the upper back, kind of channeling a cobra or even an upward-facing dog. Breathing across the collarbones. And take last inhale here and exhale, let's release. We are gonna take a forward fold. So let's inhale, take the arms to the sky and exhale, forward fold. And just allowing the body to hinge forward at the hips. Perhaps placing stacked fists underneath the third eye. We're just relaxing however you can in this fold. A few cycles of breath just to notice the movement of the hips and the sockets. Maybe you can actually feel the pivoting of the femur head in the joint of the pelvis, rotating externally as you fold a little deeper. Slowly inhale to come all the way back up. You can take your arms back to the skies, breathe in. And breathe out the palms together in front of the heart. We're gonna head into a table pose and just move a little bit deeper with some cat and cow. So you know the drill with the hands and the knees. You know, always feel free to pad anything up that's needed. Let's do pull into the core for support and we'll inhale. Lift the heart, lift the gaze. And exhale, push the ground away. Doing it again. Inhale, draw chest forward, look up. Exhale, pull it in, round into the back. <coughs> and again, inhale, pull it open. Exhale, push it away. Inhale again, just taking like five to 10 more cycles of your own. 
Can't seem to get enough water today. It must be it's a full moon. So much for our full moon flow. It's okay, we got this. And we're gonna come back to center. And from here, we're gonna pick up the right leg behind you. So let's just practice engaging your glutes. Pushing out through your lifted heel for a moment. Just notice your booty. And we're simply going to lift and lower the leg 10 times. So just try to activate your lifted glutes. I'm not going to count it out. Just take the pulses that you need to feel and awaken your booty. And then when you hit 10, see if you can reach that leg back a little further. Draw your low belly in. And send the opposite arm forward for a little bit of stabilization practice. And take a nice inhale to lift and exhale. Drop it all the way down the table. So let's do the other side. We'll pick up the left leg. And pushing out through your heel. Awaken that glute on the left side, and we'll go ahead and lift and lower, just times 10. Nothing super crazy today. Just wake up the bum, because full moons typically mean that, you know, we have a little more sitting to do. We want to stabilize everything. So once you've hit 10, reach back a little more, draw into your low belly. And taking the opposite arm forward, just noticing how that feels. Take a nice inhale to lift and exhale, bring it all the way down. Good, so we're gonna take your right leg back behind you one more time, but this time we're gonna cross it behind your opposite leg. Push up through the heel to stretch the back of the leg. We'll gaze over to the left. And I'm not gonna tell you where you should be feeling this because everyone's body functions a little differently, especially depending on how flexible or tight you are in certain areas. I'm feeling this in my outer right hip right now. And certainly in my um, in my calf muscle back there, but you know you might be feeling this in a different way. So just notice where it is. And we'll come up and out. So we'll inhale, pick that leg back up to center, and exhale, drop it down. We'll do the left side. Picking up the left leg, take a nice inhale, and exhale, cross it over to the right, and you can look over your right shoulder. We come back, so take an inhale, pick it up, and exhale back into your table. So let's flip over the toes, if it's okay for your feet to sit on your feet in this way. This is really great for the plantar fascia of the feet, as well as the arches in the feet. And we're going to interlace fingers behind the back and just send the chest to the sky. And as you do so, channel a little bit of a locust pose, if you had your hands interlaced at your low back. We are going to do locust pose here in just a few minutes. But let's do a little neck circling. So we'll inhale, look up, and exhale, the chin to the right. Inhale, bring it back up, and exhale, chin to the left. Inhale, pick it back up, really stretch across the collarbone. Exhale, bring it to the right. 
Inhale, pick it back up, stretch across the collarbones, and exhale to the left. Inhale, bring the chin back high, and exhale, let's bring the chin to the chest. Take a moment here to stretch with the chin down, noticing how that feels. Maybe picking up the arms a little bit behind you. We are going to do a little Ashtanga here in just a moment. And let's release the arms. Inhale, take the arms to the sky. And exhale, making your way to your downward facing dog. Hands to the floor, open your fingers. Find a nice healthy lift of the hips. And let's sway and paddle out the body. Big inhale and open the mouth and let it out. Just doing that a couple of times. And we'll look forward between the hands. Let's walk on up to our hands. We'll inhale, lift halfway forward. And exhale, bow forward, relax the head. And we'll come all the way up to stand. Inhale, you can take your arms to the sky. And exhale, the arms by your side. So Surya Namaskar A, let's just get into it. Inhale, lift and stretch up. And exhale, let's bow forward. Inhale, we'll lift halfway up. Exhale, fold, we'll step back to your plank. So I'm gonna drop us down to the belly. Feel free to go to Chaturanga, okay? Inhale and exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, pointing through your toes, pulling the chest forward and exhale, relax down. Inhale, table or plank and exhale, downward dog. Good. So obviously in Ashtanga, we move a little bit quicker with a little more engagement. I'm gonna invite you to engage your whole body as you move regardless of whether or not it's a moon day. Mostly because I just wanna make sure that you're paying attention to what is happening in the body rather than just kind of, you know, moving the body around just for the sake of moving. And we'll take an inhale, look forward and exhale, you can bend your knees. Let's make your way on up to the top. Halfway rise, inhale. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, let's come all the way up to stand. Really push into the feet and stretch up. And exhale, the arms by your sides. Taking it again. Inhale, lift all the way up. Exhale, bow it forward. Inhale, let's lift halfway up. Exhale, take a bow. Let's step back to your plank. Feel free to drop those knees. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, everything down to the floor. Again, you can go to chaturanga instead of prone on the belly. Inhale into your back foot of choice. Just make sure it's nice and fruitful for your upper back. And exhale, table or plank, and downward facing dog. Good. Pushing the ground away with the index fingers and thumbs. Noticing the shoulders. And asking the neck to relax. Taking an inhale, filling up the lungs. Opening the mouth, let it go. Next inhale, lift up your heels. Exhale, look forward. Step up to the top of your mat. Halfway rise, inhale. And fold, exhale. Inhale, let's come all the way up to stand. And exhale, samasitihi. And we'll take one more same pace, just kind of keeping it simple. Inhale, lift and stretch like you just woke up. And exhale, bow forward. Really feel the back body stretching. Inhale, let's pick up the chest, look forward. Exhale, fold, we'll step back to plank. Drop knees as needed. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, lower it all the way down. Inhale, pull heart through, get into your upper back. And exhale, make your way into your downward facing dog. Try to use your core to lift. A few extra rounds of breath here. Maybe there's some paddling. 
Maybe there's that. Playing with tucking the bum down toward your heels today, just to find a little more spaciousness in your low back, as well as a little more engagement in your core. <coughs> We'll go ahead and look forward. Let's make our way back to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, hold. Inhale, let's rise all the way up. And exhale to Samasitihi. So we'll take some Surya Namaskar B. So slowing it down a little bit more because we're going to emphasize engagement. Okay? So find your bend to your knees. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, squeeze your thighs together to fold forward. Inhale, let's lift halfway. Really try to squeeze your core. Exhale, fold. We'll step back to plank. Feel free to drop the knees. Inhale, look forward. And let's do drop everything down to the floor. We're going to take this into locust pose. Arms back by your hips. And we're going to lift here, maybe interlace fingers, okay? Pointing through the toes. Squeeze your bum for five. Really squeeze your booty here. Four, pull the chest up and forward. Three, squeeze your booty a little more. It's good stuff for your bum. Two, last inhale on one. Exhale, release. Hands on your shoulders. Table or plank, use your core. Down dog, exhale to lift the hips. So we'll step the right foot forward. We will go to warrior one for this particular cycle. And we're gonna hold it for five rounds of breath. For five, engage legs. Four, engage core. Three, lift the chest a little higher. Two, last inhale on one. Exhale, taking the hands to the floor. We'll step back to plank and lower all the way down to the ground. Again, locust pose, maybe interlacing fingers behind you. This is for the bum, this is for the posterior chain. Lift the body high for five. Engage the bum, squeeze it together. Four, point through those toes, get a little longer. Three, sweep shoulder blades together. Two, push your pelvis into the earth. Last, inhale on one. Exhale, come down, hands under shoulders. Table or plank from your core engagement. Down dog, exhale to lift. And we'll step the left foot forward for that warrior one. Engaging legs and rising the arms for five. Four, lift the rib cage a little higher. Three, notice how it feels just to engage feet. Two, Last inhale on one, and exhale, taking the hands down to the floor. Stepping it back to plank. Inhale, lean forward, and exhale, everything to the floor. Locust pose once again, taking a hold, perhaps, of interlocked fingers behind the back. And inhale to lift it up for five. Think about length. Can you grow a little longer here? Four, push the pelvis down into the earth. Three, two, last breath in on one, exhale, release, hands under shoulders, table or plank, inhale. Let's do a little child's pose, exhale. And just soften into your child's pose. You can rock the hips a little side to side. Those locust postures, five rounds of breath, it's a lot of work, yes. So notice your back body right now. Maybe tent the fingers and just feel the breathing. Last inhale, exhale, release the hands back to the earth. Come on up to table on your breath in and downward dog breath out. Inhale, pick up your heels. Exhale, look forward. Let's walk on up to the top. Lift halfway. Inhale and exhale, fold. We'll bend the knees. Inhale, back to chair pose. So let's hold this Utkatasana and breathe for five, four, three, 
three, two, and one. Inhale, stand up, and exhale to Samasitihi. So good. All righty, so we're gonna do it again, but this time we'll add a little bit more for the hips. So we'll try to get a little lateral in here too. So from your chair, we're gonna hold it again. Find chair pose and breathe for five. Squeeze the bum, squeeze the thighs. Four, try to lift the chest. Three, push your palms together if you can. Two, sink a little deeper into the legs. Last inhale on one. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold. We'll step back to your plank. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, lower it down. Back into your locust pose. So let's take the arms back. Please don't go as crazy this particular round. You don't have to interlace fingers. But do push the pelvis into the floor. See about just lifting the legs with your boo, your buddy, your buddy, your booty engaged. <laughs> Let's breathe. Three, five, four, three. Try to get into your upper back. Two, and one. Release down. Hands under shoulders. Come on up to table. Inhale. Downward dog. Exhale. So my Ashtanga teachers are not going to like what I do anyway. I understand that completely, but we're going to go to a warrior two from here. So we'll step your right foot forward, ground your back heel, and windmill open to warrior two. Let's breathe for five, four, three, two, engaging legs. And a one, let's windmill down to the floor. Step back to plank and lower everything down with control. And again, keeping it easy, locust posture. Lift, pretend you have a ball between your hands back there and squeeze that imaginary ball for five, four, three, two, and one, release, hands under shoulders, table, suck belly in, down dog, exhale. So we're gonna step your left foot forward for warrior two. Take a moment to ground the feet and window open. Really try to engage your legs and your feet here for five, four, three, two, and one, slowly take the hands down, pull belly in to step back, inhale, look forward, and exhale everything down. One more time, arms back by your hips. Pretend you have a ball between your hands and lift the legs and breathe for five, four, three, two, breath in on one, Exhale, release, hands under shoulders, table breath in, child's pose, breath out. Taking the knees a little further away from each other this cycle. Feeling free to come into a little bit more of a, you know, puppy hybrid with the arms forward. You might try to send your chest toward the ground. You might lift your bum a little bit. There's no pressure to go deeper. It's just something else to take this uh, take this posture into. Again, breathing in deep, breathing out with a sigh. And we'll come on up to table on your inhale next. And downward dog, exhale. Go ahead and look forward. We'll make our way back to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, inhale, and exhale, fold. Coming back to chair pose, squeeze the thighs. Let's breathe for five, four, lift the rib cage, three, two, 
and a one to samasitihi. Good, so we're gonna do either tree pose or figure four from here. So just choosing one of the two. And we'll take right leg first up and over. And just getting into your posture, steadying the drishti, steadying into your focus. And then we'll breathe for five, four, three, two, and on one, slow inhale, bring the knee toward your chest and exhale to samasitihi. Let's do the other side. Picking up left leg and dialing it in. Noticing your standing leg. Can you engage it along with your four for five? Four. Three. Two. And one, nice and slow, inhale, bring knee to chest, and exhale through samasitihi. Good. Back up to the top edge of your mat, we're gonna step back with your right leg, parallel your feet, hands to your waist. Inhale, look up, and exhale, bow forward, taking the hands to the floor. Inhale, lift halfway, and exhale, fold. We're gonna take the knees down for a frog pose. So feel free to pad up underneath your knees. And just take a moment with the knees somewhere on the floor that feels okay. Maybe you need to assess this and just actually see if this is something that your hips are into. And it could be to use a block underneath your elbows. Maybe closing the eyes, just inviting in the semblance of ease, even though a frog pose can feel relatively um, discomforting. Listening to your breathing here. Maybe going in a little deeper. And letting your ujjayi breath be velvety. Something that feels amazing through the constriction in the back of the throat. Letting the sound wash over the mind and the mental chatter. Letting the sound roll over the expectations of the body and the day. Knowing full well that we always have a mental plan that might be disrupted. And smoothing out those expectations with a louder, more audible breath. Awesome. 
So we're going to come out. So please move slowly, hands under shoulders. Just coming out up through straight arms for support. And then you can start to wiggle the knees together. And we're going to make our way into a seat. <clears throat> So a tiny bitty, bitty bit of core work, not a whole lot. Just try to draw the low belly in. Let's take some Russian twists, hands to one side and the other. Just working on finding core engagement here. See if you can squeeze your thighs toward each other. Just wake up that core a little bit better than we have thus far. Just because it's a moon day doesn't mean we can't work a little bit. You connect to pelvic floor here as you move. And come on back to center. From here, let's just straighten out the legs and we'll take a little bit of a forward fold. So we'll inhale, lift the arms and exhale, bow it forward. And again, just maybe closing the eyes, finding your breathing inward and your breathing outward without expecting the body to do what you hope it does. Instead, just make the proper engagement practices happen. A little bit of core, maybe squeezing the thighs and for each other a little here. As the core pulls in, maybe the chest draws up and forward. And we'll inhale to come up and exhale. We'll take a little Danish Shasana A with the right leg out to the side. Nice inhale to lift the chest and exhale, bowing into left leg with a similar sort of intensity where we're just looking for breathing patterns, not looking for folding in and touching chin to leg or any of that business. Instead, how can we find a little stability here? I'm just using this opportunity today to practice that concept. Maybe dragging the leg back into the socket. Maybe noticing how it feels to so try to relax a little bit into the fold. We'll take the next inhale to come up and exhale, release. We're going to switch legs. Take a nice inhale to lift the chest and exhale, folding into that straight leg. And traveling inward, even if the eyes are open, just keeping the drishti steady, typically drishti at the front big toe, but in the case today, maybe the drishti is behind your eyelids. Steadying into the strong intentionality of stabilization through core, through bringing the leg back into the socket, through a little engagement of the legs, lifting and opening across the center of the chest. letting the back of the throat remain constricted, just to travel you a little deeper into the breathing. We'll take the next inhale to come on up and exhale, release. Good. So we're going to make our way down to our backs and we're going to go to supine twist. 
So find your core, squeeze everything and slowly lower down. And we'll drop the knees on over to the right, grounding the opposite shoulder. We really haven't done a lot of twisting today, but again, it's a moon day, so we just want to take it kind of easy through the twisting process. Really noticing where the twist originates and where it goes. Maybe even envisioning the spiral staircase concept from the base of the spine all the way up past the crown of the head. We're going to switch sides, so please draw into the low belly and take the legs on over opposite direction. And just being really mindful because your low back um, in the sacrum, uh, sacroiliac area, you have these two little joints that attach to your the back of your pelvis. And there's a sacral plate back there attached to the joints, attached to the pelvis. And the sacral plate and the SI joints have a tendency in twists to become a little bit more impacted, especially if we're hypermobile. So please notice if you're feeling any pulling in your low back, particularly on those little bones back there. And if that's happening for you, I'm just gonna request that you come out of the low back area a little. And just see if you can steady the twist up into your upper back. Maybe you can feel the twist in your outer hip rather than in your low back. And again, just getting lost in your ujjayi breathing. Letting the resonance of that sound create a nice audible calming effect for the brain. Here, drawing the belly in, bring the legs back to center. And we're going to make our way to Shavasana, and you might come over to a wall and rise the legs up to the wall. I'll leave it up to you. You might just take the legs to 12 o'clock and see if you can sustain that in the middle of the room. It's, you know, it could be okay. I'm just kind of noticing because if you're doing that, you just want to make sure that there's no real effort keeping the legs up in the sky. Otherwise, just shavasana of your choosing. How do you need your shavasana to be today? Purposefully, just getting as relaxed as possible. Still feeling the sound of your breathing emanating throughout the entire essence of you. And typically we release ujjayi breath at this point. So if releasing ujjayi breath is appropriate for you, 
head into that, be intuitive, and just let whatever breathing pattern comes across the body happen. And take the next inhale to just bring your awareness back to the nose. Feeling the breath in and filling the lungs all the way across the heart and breathing out. Moving the fingers for a moment very gently and we'll start to place one hand on the belly and the other hand on the heart space. Just take five cleansing breaths here to feel the heart beating. And then starting to move the feet and the head. And taking the arms and luxuriously stretching. Big inhale and exhale, relaxing once again. Tucking the belly in to draw the legs up toward the chest, hugging inward here. 
And we'll make our way over to the right side. And rise all the way up to your seat. Well, no matter what happened today in our practice, just take the next inhale to cleanse, cleanse the slate. And as you breathe out, just imagine a chalkboard being wiped completely clean. Starting fresh and new for your day. And just remembering to breathe through this life. It's one of the best tools we have for grounding. Giving thanks to that sensation of groundedness, even if you haven't yet connected to that. And we'll close our practice today with the sound of OM. Inhale. Thank you all so much for joining today. Namaste. My sleepy-ish class. Hopefully that was nice.